Hey y'all, you ready for this? <laughs> um, in in my study, in, in I started studying um, Matthew verse by verse, and I kept seeing this thread throughout scripture. And let me see. I want to get there. Um, since the beginning in Genesis, where he set the trees before Adam, right? He set them before Adam because Eve was not yet there, I don't think. Let me go. Let's go back. Let's go Genesis chapter 2, um, verse 7. The Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath or spirit of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, framed, and constituted. And out of the ground the Lord made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight or to be desired, good, suitable for food, <clears throat> the tree of life also in the center of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge, the difference between good and evil, blessing and cursing, or blessing and calamity. So God put these trees in the center, and of course, God said in verse um Let's go down to 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and guard and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, You may eat freely of every tree in the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it you shall surely die. So God has set before mankind since the beginning, since Adam in the garden, the choice between life and death, blessing and cursing. And he says, if your eye is sound, if your eye is single, if your eye, um, it's not complicated and it is not confused. If we are looking straight on the word of life or the tree of life then we're not concerned with the knowledge of good and evil because the words of the Lord he says let my words not depart from your sight keep them in the center of your heart that's where your eye is to be single and sound that it is not confused with which voice to listen to or which tree to watch or um, which way to go or whose words to listen to because we know that it is single and that it is the word of the Lord. Um, full of light. If your eye is single, it will be full of light. That means you will know which way to go. Your entire body, your whole natural existence with no confusion with wisdom and understanding. But if your eye is unsound, unsound is the opposite. In the King James, it says evil. It says, if your eye be evil, which is literally diseased or blind. Now, what happened in the Garden of Eden? Go back to Genesis chapter 3. What happened when they ate that fruit? Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good, suitable, pleasant for food, and that it was delightful to look at, and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She gave some also to her husband, and he ate. Then the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked. But really... Were their eyes opened or did they become blind? In that moment, their vision went from single and sound. They 
only saw good. Two, diseased and blind. They could no longer, they lost that connection with God and, and they lost their vision. Listen to this. Metaphorically, this is from Thayer's, in an ethical sense, it's used in association with the working class, the servile class, servants, slaves, poor, and stuck. Not that contempt for labor is expressed, only expressive of unintermittent toil and carrying no suggestion for results. That's what happened in the garden. Their eye became evil and unsound, and it was diseased and they were blind. And this is expressive of toiling, which is the result of the curse. Go back again to Genesis chapter 3, um, and it says, God cursed the ground. Um, where's the word toiling? And he said to Adam, this is verse 17, because you have listened and given heed to the voice of your wife and eaten of the tree, I com commanded you saying you shall not eat of it. The ground is cursed <clears throat> because of you. In sorrow and toil shall you eat of the fruits all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. And in the sweat of your face you'll eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, and to dust you shall return. This unintermittent -inter toil and carrying no suggestions of results. Um, that's the curse. And so now when Jesus is teaching in Matthew 6, there's a choice. Jesus came and gave us choice back to restoration with the Father or to continue being um, broken and blind. And so if our eye is sound, we have that lamp that gives us direction. But if it is unsound, evil, and blind, we are stuck in constant toil. I love, I'm a word girl, right? Unintermittent. That means it's constant toil and carrying no suggestion of results. And you know, that's how, that's, that's what happens when we get stuck in our own way. And when we're taking counsel and advice from, from people outside of the word of God that, that do not consult him. Now there are Christian counselors, there are godly men and women that he has established and put in places to help us. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when we choose to go to the world instead of the word and expect to get relief and results. And that's not God's way of doing it. If we are his children, then he is our source. And he is our relief and results. Matthew 11, um, 28 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will cause you to rest. He says, Come, learn of me. I'm trying to get there. Come and learn of me. Take my yoke upon me. For I am gentle and meek and humble, and you will find rest and relief and ease and refreshment. For my yoke is wholesome. It's easy to be born. We will pick up here next week. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.